Karen, it's really an exciting story how you and your co-founder came together to start Mimosa. How did it happen? I had been studying a molecule in the burn space for about 10 years, and he had been studying a similar model but in a stroke model. Uh, what actually happened is we have a mutual friend with type 1 diabetes who actually said we should meet each other. And I, for a long time, said, well, I don't know. I know a lot about this molecule, maybe slightly egotistical as a scientist. <laughs> Until finally, uh, we had a coffee date. And our di type 1 diabetic friend actually brought us on this coffee date. At, um, within five minutes of having a coffee, I realized that uh, Dr. Lung or General Lung had the missing piece of a puzzle that I couldn't figure out. And three coffees later, we had figured out the solution to uh, looking at this particular molecule in a non-invasive way, but that we could do it on a small scale. So we could take these technologies from 12 or 10, feet, uh, 10 or 12 feet tall into something that was very small. In fact, we could probably attach it to a cell phone. And then over a series of months, we worked together scientifically to figure out those algorithms that we could use the inherent power of a cell phone to do that. But essentially, up to that point, we didn't know each other at all. <laughs> so what does the technology do for the consumer, for the patient? So right now, it's designed as a tissue viability device. And so if you're a diabetic, one of the problems you have is you can't tell if your foot is injured. They don't have sensation in their leg or they don't have sensation in their feet. Something as a tight fitting shoe or a sock leaves a blister. That blister leaves a hole, which is called a wound. That wound leads to an amputation. This device. And what sort of scale of problem is this worldwide? Right now, there's 422 million people with diabetes globally. Wow. And so yeah. the scale is huge. That number is actually only increasing. There's a 434% increase in diabetes by 2020. How does the technology identify the problem before it becomes something as severe as an amputation? Right now, there's no check for your feet. You have nothing. They actually have to come to the hospital to get their feet checked, or they go to an outpatient foot clinic. Our device actually allows them to check in the home. So that's how it has an advantage for the patient. How it has an advantage for the physician and the hospital system or the clinical system is you can triage people at earlier time points. We know that patient X is having a trouble, they can come into the hospital earlier time point, host an intervention and hopefully prevent that amputation. As a, a surgeon who has a specialty in this space, what it also allows me to do and what comes out of my lab uh, is the capacity to create new and novel technology to actually treat the problem because we understand it. We are going to understand the physiology of why these people get into trouble. What is actually the go-forward roadmap then for the technology from where you are today? Go-forward roadmap is really to get it in the hands of the patient, and we want to get it into the hands of the patient fairly quickly. So within 18 months, we're hoping to have at least 200 manufactured uh, in Canada and then uh, collect that data. So we're going to be collecting a lot of physiological information in different types of stages. So in the early stage before wounds, in a wounded stage, and then just before they have an amputation. And then from that data, you can redesign your technology and then scale it even more. What does the rollout timeline look like? Yeah, so we hopefully will have a commercial device in 18 months. Uh, we've been moving fairly quickly. Uh, we have most of um, the algorithms figured out. They're fairly novel, and, and uh, I think they're fairly neat. Um, I think the neatest part, though, is we're the first group that ever describe what's called a hyperspectral image that's captured from a cell phone. We're the first group ever in the world to capture it. Then you have some intellectual property around that? Yep, everything is fully protected. So you've actually gone down the road of filing the patents already yes. as, a, as part of your startup? Yes. What was that process like as a founder? I think that process is very difficult, especially coming at it from a scientist, because you don't have the resources to file large patents with big firms. Uh, one of the things that's come out of some of the funding we've received for the companies, we've been able to really protect what we've created. I think also as a scientist, you have an altruistic motive for why you're doing things. But then as you get into the space, you realize that a business could help get it into the hands of the patients faster, but you do have to protect yourself within that space. So transitioning your thinking from a scientist to, to commercialization right. and for-profit motive, is, was, was a big transition for you? I think it was a big transi transition initially, um, mainly because my headspace is always in how can you help people. Why we created this company is because we realized we could help people faster than we could traditionally through our science. It would take us 10 years to get this device to patients. We can do this now in 18 months. We don't have time. Diabetes is a global tsunami, and if you don't have something right now, we're going to be in a lot of trouble in a, in a very short period of time. What, what is sort of the cause of this tsunami? Is it diet? Is it eating and work habits, sleeping habits? A lot of it is definitely our lifestyle and the way that we eat. So we, we have some, mainly with rela in relationship to type 2 diabetes, not for type 1. Um, so that certainly needs to change. Also, because we have so many people now that already have type 2 diabetes, they have the complications of that. So the eye complications, the kidney complications, heart and vascular complications. So we actually have to deal with the people who currently have it, and that's not gonna change. That number is the same. 
in America right now, they spend $422 billion a year on diabetes. One third of those costs are from the lower extremity. But we've made no progress in 30 years or advances in, in, in this space.